I'm just going to do this short lecture to demonstrate to you about making marks with your brushes. Making marks mindfully, in other words, think about the shape you are creating. I've seen a lot of um, rather strange examples recently and I thought it was worth just putting um, a lecture up here. That when you're painting, it's not who can finish first, it's merely more of a question of it, have I made something that looks believable? So take your time, um, imagine it in your head or you've got a photograph or a picture to work from or you might even be outdoors painting from life. Let us just have a look at an example. <clears throat> I'm going to do a row of trees. It doesn't matter what shade of green I've got, let's just use what's here. As you know I like to use what's in my palette. It's not that I mean with my paints. No. Right, there's a greeny colour. Let's put a bit of blue in it. Ooh, it's got a bit murky. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Let us let us assume that we are going to paint a very distant row of trees. Now, I see a lot of Okay, that's it. That's my row of trees. Now, wouldn't it be more interesting and a little more um, believable if you actually thought about the shape of the trees that you were creating? Some are taller than others, some are rounder. And remember, you sometimes see bits of sky through the leaves. So it's a row. Let's add a bit more paint. A bit more paint there. And so there we are. Then we get to the Bruno roll of uh, absorbent paper. Let's go to some raw rubber. Just put a few stumps. Now that's going to bleed, but it doesn't matter on this example. And then when that's dried, you could go back and put some darker colour in particularly underneath because that's where it will be shadier. That's a little too wet to work. But do you understand what I mean about making marks? If you're doing, say, leaves, for example, think about the shape. And sometimes the brush will do the work for you. And look how different those shapes are. Quite often, um, this goes for leaves as well, something in a pot. Um, I've seen the geranium in the pot that I do. Let me just do give you a little pot, just to demonstrate what I mean. And it's difficult for me to emulate that, um, what I have seen. But imagine you've got a plant, your leaves aren't all... all the same in a clump, all dotted round. And then your flowers they're all the same in a clump, all the same size. Think about the shape that you're making. Think about the type of plant that it is. Let me do another, I'm just going to turn that round because I'm 
give myself a scrappy bit of paper. Okay, so when we look at a geranium plant, for example, the leaf is oops, a bit like that. So create your leaves to look like the shape of the plant that you are painting. I just want to change that brush. It's not giving me what I want. It's a beautiful brush. It's a Pro Art Renaissance Sable number no. six, but it's not giving me the um, the body that I need. So for the geranium then, and you've seen the videos, you've seen it on YouTube. Let's put. Oh, it's a rotten colour. Hang on a minute. Right, okay. So, you're looking for a leaf that is a bit more like that shape. Then another one. So you can do this sort of little swirly movement. Go out if you can, if you have them, look at a geranium, look it up on the internet. Because you don't have to, as I say so many times, give the information 100% to the people who are looking at it. They will take what you give them and they will put it together and they'll come up with an answer, okay? There's a little bird on the bottom. So you see, I'm making things different sizes in different places. Okay, and the geranium is a head of lots of little petals. Lots of little petals all joined together like that. And it comes out of a central point, so let us put Lot of little petals and leave some white space because that could be a highlight or it just shows where there's a gap between your petals and here is a little bud just coming out right I'm not going to do more of that because you've seen it before but I really 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 want to push home this idea of thinking about the marks you're making think about what do I want it to look like when I've painted it. Visualisation, if you can do this, is really, really helpful. I do it a lot. I do it loads and loads of times with my work because I'm thinking, right, what do I want as the finished article? So if you can visualise it or you've got something to look at, a reference, a photograph, a picture, use it and don't just make marks. Think about them, please. Thank you.